James Jimmy Breslin, 47 at the time, was a street smart, tough guy journalist who had come up writing sports stories about angry jocks and corrupt sports figures in the 1950s. After sports, he had moved on to the politics and mob beat. It was there, amongst the crooks and the politicians, that Breslin found his initial success. By the time the son of Sam came around, having had always gravitated towards outsider stories, Breslin was clearly drawn to the case. As he had covered psychopathic killers before, it seemed his whole career had been inching him closer and closer to them from day one. Also, he lived within a mile or two of the attacks in Forest Hill, Queens. So in some ways, he came by the story honestly, as it had literally struck close to home. Breslin was one of the first prominent journalists in New York City at that time to key in on these murders as something a little out of the ordinary. These are not random acts. There's some kind of pattern here. So the fact that Breslin was a celebrity and widely read in New York City than probably any other news person at that time, I think he saw Breslin as maybe an intelligent sort of columnist detective Breslin made his bones covering mafia stuff and grisly stuff. He thought maybe he could play the little cat and mouse game with Jimmy Breslin the way he was playing it with the cops. Jack asked Berkowitz if the letter to Breslin was his way of trying to deal with what he was doing. Were some of the letters and notes that you wrote to, uh, to Breslin, were they attempts to maybe deal with, with what you were doing by putting it down on paper? I guess so, although I wasn't really cognizant of it at the time, you know. I suppose they were. To give some sort of literary meaning to it or something? To try to get some meaning to it or, or to convince the public or something. It was also silly, you know. Uh, I can't really explain it. Okay. Uh, you can say it was silly, but if I go back, to the, to the parents, the little victims. Yeah. That's not the word they're going to use at all. Well, no, I, I mean, what I did was, uh, I, don't, I don't mean funny, you know, I, you know what I mean? I, I, can't, I can't explain it. To, when I say silly, I don't mean funny. I mean, it was just so, senseless would be a better word. Okay. Not silly and not fun, but certainly senseless. I don't think he had ever studied poetry or literature in any meaningful degree, except maybe the crime and pornography and homicidal pathology textbook stuff. But yeah, that was remarkable. New York was a very dirty, crime-ridden place at that time in many, many parts. It was before they began a, a serious effort to clean up what was a rapidly declining, big, urban ghetto. Regardless of whether the letters held any kind of literary merit, their depiction of New York City at the time did strike a chord with people. But the only thing that David really wants you to know about them is that they weren't crazy. They were written, according to him, in order to encourage the police to catch him. Encouragement he felt they needed in order to get the job done. Well, there, there, were, there weren't crazy letters, by the way. See, people look at them and say the man's deranged men, but you see, they missed the whole point on the letters. The letters were, were actually to spur the police on, right? You see, to drive them harder because they see that this is like more serious than it is, you know? It's like to push the police into doing more to catch me. And people miss this. They just see the letters as this guy terrorizing. Yeah, well, I suppose I wanted to call attention to myself, you see, as a, as a, as a criminal, even though Nobody knew it was me. But there was so much more that they, these people, the average person, doesn't ever see. Despite any deeper meaning people may or may not have missed from the letter, police did manage to lift two partial prints that seemed to belong to the killer, although it took them six weeks. Later, prints from the letter would match prints taken from David the night he was arrested, as well as from the New York Firearms Control Board print that had been a part of the application for his rifle permit he sent in in December of 1975, the same month he attacked 15-year-old Michelle Foreman with a hunting knife. 
When he was later asked why he wrote both the letter to Borelli and the letter to Breslin in block letters, Berkowitz said, quote, The reason I printed the letters to Captain Borelli and Breslin was for effect. I wrote those two out first in longhand. Then I wrote them again in print without any changes. I thought the printing was more ghoulish looking, end quote. 